Yo, what's up guys? So it's been a minute, but I'm back. Okay, so today we're going to be getting into the very first photo book review that I want to do. And we're gonna be looking at the book That Summer by Korean photographer Kigon Kwak. Now, Kigon Kwak is a fashion photographer, but this book doesn't really have anything to do with fashion. Um, and I kind of like that, that his commercial work and his personal work, uh, they might overlap a little bit, but they are relatively separate. Um, I think I just relate to that because my work is kind of similar. And yeah, so I want to start off with a Korean photographer for the first of these reviews. Um, I won't do a Korean photographer every time, but I thought it'd be a nice way to get going. And yeah, the only other thing I want to say before actually diving into this is that I'm not really looking to talk about how good I think the photos are or anything quite like that. I'm much more interested in how the photos relate to each other, the sequencing, the arrangement and design, because I'm interested in making my own photo books. And yeah, I think this is a good way to prepare for doing something like that. Okay, so let's not bang on too much and get right into it. I really do like the cover image here. I think it uh, looks super cool. And it is a really nice way to start off a book. Um, I think there's kind of a really uh, kind of plain, uh, but like simple but good metaphor uh, for a photo book, which is this kid is standing at the edge of the water looking like he's about to jump in. And that's kind of like us as viewers. We're, we're here about to dive into the contents of this book. Um, and yeah, you'll start to see as we go through these pages how water is a recurring theme throughout the book. So I think it's a great strong cover image to start with, really nice like bright poppy colors. And yeah, I think it works really well as an introduction to what we're going to be getting into. Design-wise, really simple. That's Amo Kiwon Kwak. And give me a second to just check my framing here. Okay, that looks about right. I'm uh, working with like a two camera rig. So yeah, fingers crossed it doesn't fall apart in me while filming this. Okay, so we get into the first image and quite literally we dive right into the book. Um, the, yeah, the kid from the first picture, he's jumped into the water and it's just like us opening the book, jumping into it. Um, so kind of just extending the opening metaphor from the front cover, which I think is a really cool idea and it looks good. Um, kind of an oddly framed image in and of itself, but meaning-wise it works really well. You'll have to excuse me, someone's at the door. I'm back. <laughs> cool, so let's get back into it. Um, yeah, so as I said, we have the recurring theme of water throughout this book. And again, we've got water here on our right and these bright, like very similar kind of poppy colors on the left, which really feels like it feels like summer for one with the, yeah, with the towel here and these bright colors. But it also, this slowly begins to feel a bit like, like travel, like being away from home, like this image outdoors, like the beach is traditionally a place where people travel to, they go on holiday to. And yeah, throughout the book, these recurring themes of travel and water, um, yeah, they, they just come up again and again. And you can see it again here echoed in this, picture of this train, which is definitely not like any trains in Seoul, um, which has this kind of nice elements of the mud on the front, which gives a sense of moving forward. And so, yeah, like this is, like all the, all the themes are quite clearly introduced in the way the first couple images are included. You have the water, you have the bright colors, the summery feel, and the sense of travel or being somewhere different. And yeah. Again, water, like water in a variety of iterations. You have it in the pool, you have it in the ocean, and you have it in the rain. So it just comes up again and again. Okay, and then a couple pages into it, you get to this really, really cool pairing of photos, which again, reflects the water here on the left-hand side. But I think, uh, I think an image pairing like this starts to give us a sense of what this book might be about, um, or at least one of the things that it might be about. On the left-hand side, you have the ducks swimming in moving water. It's a picture of life, like they, 
the ducks are alive, they're active, they're out. And then on the right hand side, you have the stuffed bird here looking at itself in the mirror and the photos taken indoors. And there's a strong sense of being outdoors, being moving is akin to being alive and being indoors, being stuck is being akin to being dead, <laughs> basically. Um, so I think this, uh, an image pairing like this might give us a sense of what the photographer feels um, about when he feels the most alive or the most, um, I don't know, fully actualized as a human being or what have you. Um, but anyway, a pairing like this is a, it's a really great one and I like it. And I think a very, it's, it's a strong sense, it gives us a strong sense of what this book is about early on into it. And then, yeah, a little bit deeper into the book, you get into a, yeah, you get a sequence like this, which the first time I looked at this, I was a little bit like, uh, maybe this book isn't as interesting as I thought it was initially, because I, I, I did, the picture seemed a little impenetrable uh, in the beginning, these two anyway. But um, the more, I mean, I've been through this book a couple times now, and every time I look at these pictures, I like them more and more. Um, because I think they're quite quite sharp and quite clever. Um, so anybody who's traveled or traveled alone especially knows the feeling of being separate from people that are around you, uh, feeling distant, feeling like you can't really connect. Um, like travel's amazing, but it can be a little bit lonely. And I think photos like this reflect that very, very well. You have the photographer who's obviously behind the fence and above looking down on all the people uh, below, who, to my mind, looking at the like the boards and the signs, yeah, like they don't look like they're Korean. So I get a strong sense of these people being different from the photographer. And I think that, yeah, the fence in between him and them like really emphasizes that. Uh, the fact that he's looking down, cut, like more or less on the back of their heads, like emphasizes that. And at first I was like, why would you need two photos to do this and yeah just looking at the way it's been arranged with the fence coming in from the left hand side coming out on the right hand side here it feels like we are ourselves behind the fence in the way we look at this which is such a cool idea um this is not the kind of photo that i would ordinarily take and i feel like i learned something from both the photo that's been taken here and the way it's been arranged uh, it's it's just a really cool idea of like travel's fun, but it can be a little bit isolating. <laughs> so yeah, it's a really, really nice pairing. Very good idea. And then, yeah, we're nearing halfway through this book and you get to an image like this, which feels quite different from all the images that have come before it. Um, it looks like it was taken out of, a f out of the window of a car as the car was moving. And so you have all these, uh, like all these leaves are blurry in the front here. And there's a sense of movement going through. You even have um, either a reflection or, I don't think it's a cloud, it's reflection along the top here, which we're just with the angle and the movement, it really makes it feel like we're passing through this image, which gives me a sense that whatever's gonna come next will be in a new place or a different place. And lo and behold, we're in a completely different scenario now. Like this is, radically different to any of the images that have come before it. And I think it's really clever pairing this image with that image because this image, if it was introduced first, it could be kind of startling or not, not exactly startling, but like so sudden as to pull us out of the enjoyment of the book and almost would feel disconnected. But by giving a buffer of an image like this, which suggests that we're moving somewhere else, it's, it's a way into enjoying this image upon first glance. So yeah, I think again, sequencing wise, this book is done really, really well. Okay, now we're more or less slap bang in the middle of the book and we have a picture like this, which shows really tumultuous water. Um, this looks like the ocean to me. And the way this image and the next image pair together, I think are great, um, kind of on par with the live birds on the left and the dead birds on the right. Um, but pairing them next to white pages, like these two images are paired, it really makes it 
makes us pay attention to the single image, to the, it makes us focus on this idea a lot more clearly. And yeah, here are the, here's the pair. We have this turbulent outdoor water compared to another, again, a photo inside with water that is controlled running through a faucet into a sink, which is a controlled place for it to arrive and water in a water bottle, which is another controlled, contained way of having water. Um, just such a cool pairing of images, which, again, I think for keeping them next to the white pages instead of having them right next to each other, helps us focus in on the idea just a little bit more. Like, there is this, and there is that. They the meaning is contained within, like fully contained within these images. And so, yeah, I, I really like the, the sequencing here. This coming first and then this coming second. Looks really, really cool. It's a great idea. Okay. I want to take a moment just to say something. While I was editing this footage, I realized I was talking quite a bit about the meaning of these images. And I just want to say this is my interpretation of them. It's totally possible that somebody else looking at these pictures will see something else. And that's, that's totally fine. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just get really excited when I talk about this stuff and my imagination runs away with me a little bit. And so, yeah, I just wanted to be clear that I'm not trying to give a definitive reading on what I think is going on in these photos, but I'm talking about what resonates with me. So that's all I want to say about that. Let's get back to it. Okay, and we've been going through a photo book about the beach and about water, and this is the first image that I see that really makes me think of Martin Parr. Um, and it's a great photo, I really like it a lot. Um, it's a lot closer to the kind of stuff I personally like shooting. Um, just all the bright colors, uh, shot with flash, the, the big bellies, the tattoo, the Heineken bottle, the Coca-Cola here, Nestle in the background, like all of it is so kind of pop arty and I, I just think it's a wonderful picture and kudos to the photographer for getting in there and shooting it. Like, I'm sure it's not the most comfortable photo to, uh, shoot, especially with, uh, what well, looks to me like it could be a flash. Um, for the way that this is hotspotting over here. So yeah, good on him. Uh, I think it's a really cool photo. Um, yeah, I love seeing this kind of stuff. Okay, so we're nearing the end of the book now and uh, we've returned back to the, yeah, to the intro scene and we have this kid mid-flight jumping in and yeah, I think it's just a really nice way to sort of round off this book is with coming back to the original idea of like, okay, this adventure, this travel might be at an end, but you now have to jump into something new and go into the next uh, next phase. And I don't know, life is kind of full of these moments where you have to just commit to your situation. And so, yeah, I think it's really nice that it gets brought back. Um, even with this being a different kid than the original kid, this is the kid from the cover, and he's watching this kid jump in it's, uh, yeah, there's kind of a bit of a layer of meaning here. So again, really cool idea coming back to it. And we have a similar image here um, to end with of this girl jumping into the water framed through the barbed wire fence, like committing to a new situation to, to going is, is scary and not easy um, and uncomfortable but ultimately worth it if it results in a book like this, you know, and results in the kind of experiences you get when you travel. So yeah, all in all, I think a really, really fun and interesting book and not like not crazy heady or opaque or anything like that. You can enjoy it just on a visual level or if you spend some time thinking about it, I think there's, yeah, there's some depth and something to be, to be gleaned from these images. And yeah, the last little bit is a, some expl explanations and just talking about the images. And we can see here from the list of works that 
for a book called That Summer. This was actually shot over a number of years, um, which I think is is pretty cool um, to give it a, to try and make this all his travels condense into one sort of one book, one consistent idea throughout. Um, again, it shows a good bit of clever sequencing. And it says here that this is published by N A, which is a publishing house here in Korea. Um, I'll put the like details in the description below. And it's an edition of 500. So I picked up this book in a bookstore in Anguk called Irasan, which is basically the best photo bookstore in Seoul, or I'm guessing all of Korea. Um, I'll also put a link to that below. Um, so you can go get it checked out. Last time I was there, this book was still available. They had one or two copies left. Um, so yeah, I really recommend trying to pick up your own copy and uh, getting on that. But yeah, I'll be back with another video soon, hopefully. And yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. Cheers.